And transfusion reactions, we have two main categories, either acute, which occur in the first 24 hours, or delayed, which occur later. We have the acute immunologic reactions and the acute non-immunologic. The acute immunologic reactions, of course, first comes the acute hemolysis, acute hemolytic transfusion reaction, and then the allergic reactions, and then the acute, uh, the, tr the trolley transfusion, acute lung injury, and then febrile non-hemolytic reaction, which is the only one which is not fatal. These boxes in bold mean that it is potentially fatal reaction. And then the non-immunologic, we have the bacterial co uh, contamination, the problem of the circulatory overload, and then we have chemical or physical hemolysis. And then we have the delay, which occur after 24 hours, and these can be immunologic, like hemolytic also, or graft versus host disease, or the post-transfusion purple. Or they can be non-immunologic, like hemocidrosis, this is overload of iron, and the transmission of disease. If an acute reaction is observed, then we have to stop the transfusion immediately because these reactions can occur with very little volume of transfused blood, maybe 15 milliliters, 10 milliliters, and they are all proportionate with the amount of blood already transfused. So the more you transfuse, the more you will have the problem evident. And you have to be aware that if the patient is unconscious, the only signs of an acute reaction will be hypotension and maybe that as a surgeon you observe that the blood is oozing from everywhere or we have bleeding tendency because most acute reactions will lead to DIC. The acute hemolytic reaction is when antibodies in the patient's blood, in the recipient blood, react with the RBCs in the donor blood and usually acute hemolytic reaction occur with incompatible ABO groups. So the anti-A or anti-B antibodies in the patient's blood will react with the blood transfused to the patient and will cause destruction, which is hemolysis, and will cause activation of the coagulation cascade, the intrinsic pathway from factor 12 onwards, and this will lead to coagulation DIC. You remember the DIC, we said there are four types. One of them is the hypercoagulable type. So this will lead to coagulation and DIC and organ dysfunction. Of course, one of the main organs that go into failure early is the kidney because of the hemolysis, because of the hypotension and because of the uh, anti and antibody reaction. The isohemagglutinins also they activate the kinines and the cytokines like in septic shock. So what they do, they increase the capillary permeability and fluid starts to leak from the blood vessels into the tissue spaces and also they cause direct vasodilatation. That's why you have hypotension. So this is the acute hemolytic reaction. The other reaction we will talk about is the trolley, the transfusion reaction acute lung injury. The definition of trolley is it's an acute non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. It occurs during or after a transfusion. If it occurs within six hours, this is acute trolley. If it occurs from 6 to 72 hours, this is delayed transfusion acute lung injury. And this occurs the other way around. This occurs when the antibodies in the, in the donor blood react with antigens in the recipient. Where are these antigens located? The antigens are those of neutrophils in the lung. So the etiology of this is that the neutrophils have to go to the lung first. And this what occurs in cases of shock, in cases of sepsis, in cases of severe trauma. The neutrophils are sequestrated and they go to the lung. This is the first step. The second step is that the blood of the donor has, anti, has the antibodies against the neutrophils. And this is more if this blood is derived from a female uh, donor, not from a male donor. So trolley occurs because antibodies attack the antigen on neutrophils and the neutrophils are in the lung because of prolonged uh, critically ill uh, patient. Now, the, it's, a tra it's an acute lung injury, so what will be present? Hypoxemia. And the hypoxemia, the evidence of hypoxemia is if we have a, uh, arterial pressure, oxygen arterial pressure less than 60 or saturation less than 90% and pressure oxygen two fractional inspired oxygen less than 200. There is no evidence of heart disease 
there is no evidence of uh, fluid overload and so this pulmonary edema is an uncardiogenic pulmonary edema the neck veins are not distended and by auscultation you will notice that the breath sounds are very low or absent at some areas because of the pulmonary edema these are the two reactions i wanted to explain what happens uh, during them and both will lead to the ic will lead to hypotension and they are both antibody mediated either the antibodies from the donor or the antibodies from the recipient now we when we manage transfusion reactions we actually manage according to who guidelines that we have category one which are the mild reactions and the mild reactions they are just some articaria rash the patient is itching so what we do as any reaction will stop the transfusion and we'll give antihistamines if the patient and we observe for 30 minutes patient improves then we restart the, trans, the transfusion and put the patient under observation if it doesn't improve we move to category 2 what is category 2? category 2 is the moderately severe reactions and here in the moderately severe reactions we notice that there is fever and there is tachycardia so when a patient is itching or has a rash or something but there is no fever and there is no tachycardia this is a mild reaction but if there is tachycardia or there is a fever then we are in a moderately severe reaction and this is due to hypersensitivity what we do we stop the reaction and because these are moderately severe we return to the lab the blood and the transfusion set and the needle and we take two blood samples one of the blood samples is coagulated and the other one with anticoagulant to do another cross match and to do serum uh, tests for organ functions if we need and we will send urine for uh, diagnosis of hemoglobinuria hemoglobinuria usually diagnoses hemolysis if there is hemoglobinuria then there is hemolysis in the blood we give antihistaminic and we give corticosteroids uh, if there is anaphylactoid reaction and observe if things improve you can restart transfusion with a new unit with a new uh, transfusion set if she doesn't improve then you go to the third category the third category is the life-threatening reactions life-threatening reactions can be acute hemolytic can be the trolley can be the uh, septic shock bacterial contamination anaphylaxis all these are the life-threatening and the mark of a life-threatening transfusion reaction is hypotension. If there is tachycardia and fever, it's a moderate and severe reaction. If there is hypotension, it is a, a severe reaction. And of course, if there is hemoglobinuria, because hemoglobinuria, if it's visualized, if the urine is smoky, then this means that there is hemolysis. So when you're doing a cesarean section and you transfuse blood, if you find the urine brownish smoky, it's not because of the dye. Not every time it's because of the dye. You have to look for the blood pressure. If the blood pressure is becoming, is, is, is reduced or is coming down 20 systolic, 20 millimeter mercury systolic than it was previously. And the urine is smoky, it's not because of the dye. Most probably this is a transfusion reaction. What you do, you have to stop the transfusion immediately and send again the blood and the unit of blood and the transfusion set and everything to the blood bank with the two, two uh, samples of blood and the urine for analysis for hemoglobinuria and here you insert an IV line, infuse saline because she's hypotensive, maintain the airway and give high oxygen mask because there is increased oxygen demand. In severe anaphylactic reactions we administer two things, you administer adrenaline intramuscular, the ampoule is 1 to 1000 dilution and you give it's one milligram in the ampoule so you calculate the body weight of the patient you give 0.01 milligram per kilogram body weight and you give frusamide why you give diuretic in order to avoid renal failure many cases of acute reaction end up in renal failure so frusamide is to force the blood to go through the kidney and give some renal support till you the patient recovers and then you have to treat what is present if the patient is in anaphylactoid shock you give corticosteroids and bronchodilators if hypoxemia you have to maintain the oxygen either by mask by CPAP up to a ventilator it depends if she has trolley or not and if the IC you give the platelet transfusion and the uh, fresh frozen plasma if she is hypotensive you start giving vasopressors 
If oliguria, there is risk of renal failure, you do the fluid balance, charts, and you give diuretics, and maybe you will need intermittent dialysis. If bacteremia, you give antibiotic cover and antibiotic support. So this is the framework of transfusion reactions, either category one or category two or category three. So this is the short session 11. Session 12 will be the uh, respiratory morbidity in critically ill patients.